So it's, 20, it's 2019 and one asks, what is changing on the landscape for agricultural and rural development policy in Africa? I see two things. I see some of the big narratives which are coming from the major institutions in Africa as being a great deal more positive than they were in the past. They're about growth, they're about progress, they're about opportunities for farmers. And if you want an example of where I'm reading that, then if you look at AGRA's annual uh, status reports on African agriculture, some of the reports coming out of the African Development Bank, some of the reports coming out of the Malabo Montpellier uh, panel, these have an optimism that simply wasn't there 10, 15 years ago. But I'm also fascinated by the micro-evidence. I've been looking at studies carried out in rural Tanzania comparing the status of villages today compared with 30 years ago, taking researchers who did their research in the late 1980s, early 1990s, going back in the last few years to see what has changed in their villages. And their stories are quite remarkable. Their stories are about much more growth, much more progress, much more wealth in those Tanzanian villages than you would imagine by looking at some of the national statistics. And much of this has been driven by agricultural opportunity. So a couple of examples. A small boom in producing sesame seeds in Rukwa district in the southwest of Tanzania for export all the way to India. Uh, rice, irrigated rice from the Kilimbero Valley and this is not by large-scale agribusiness, it's by Sukuma pastoralists who've migrated into the Kilimbero Valley and have indigenously worked out how to produce rice at a certain scale and are commercializing that rice. I have narratives from southwest Ghana where colleagues are looking at oil palm producing households and we're coming to statistics which say that the average income in those households per person is 2,500 US dollars a year. This is quite extraordinary when one goes back 20, 30 years in Africa. We might have been talking about a quarter of that amount per person. So this is significant wealth. We in ODI have just done a synthesis of studies on small-scale irrigation. And again, we see much more small-scale irrigation than the official records suggest. In parts of Tanzania, there may be 10 times the area irrigated compared to the official records. In Ghana, we think it's five times as much as appears in the national statistics. And people are making real money out of their irrigated plots. In Zimbabwe, for example, we have entrepreneurs with just one to two hectares of vegetables irrigated with a cheap Chinese pump, and they are seeing gross incomes of $20,000 a year or more. So on this basis, I see much more grounds for framing our narratives, our challenges for, for, policy, for, for policy in Africa in terms of seizing opportunities, in terms of boosting what is taking place with farmers. Now, I'm also aware that there are a series of stories from Africa which are unheralded successes. And I see this in health, for example. In Malawi, for example, under five mortality has fallen from 200 per thousand to around about 50 per thousand in a period of 15 years. Some medical professionals know that, but in the circles I move, people don't talk about this, yes? The major reduction in stunting in Ghana, the increases in girls going to secondary school, and the latest of the AGRA status reports for 2019 is about the hidden middle. Not the missing middle, the hidden middle. And the hidden middle are all those informal entrepreneurs who link smallholder farmers to markets, creating new opportunities for farmers, creating new wealth in the value chains, creating more employment. So I see things in a context of a great deal more hope and opportunity than we've seen in the past. What is our policy challenge? Our policy challenge then, of course, is to work with these processes to find ways that government can make the difference. What has made the difference in, in rural Tanzania? 
It's government building roads, it's government providing schools, it's government providing health posts. Across Africa, there are an enormous number of pilots, trials, innovations and experiments underway. And I see those in supply chains, connecting farmers to markets. I see them in people who are trying to deal with protracted crises. How do we respond to situations like that? And I see it with re respect to the environmental and the climate change agenda of moving to sustainable agri-systems. There is an enormous amount going out on there in the field. So I think the big challenge for myself as a researcher is to get the funds and to go and review and evaluate the pilots which are taking place in the field so that we know what has worked, why it's worked and the conditions under which it's worked so we can spread these lessons because I think across rural Africa now there are an awful lot of answers that we don't know enough about.